Gift cards. Are they a great idea for a Christmas present or do they send the wrong message? We'll discuss it with a first time guest on the show starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Everyone loves gift cards, right? If you don't know what to get someone for Christmas or their birthday, you give them a gift card. And who doesn't like to get a gift card as a gift? It's better than the actual thing because if you don't need the thing, it's hard to return. So now you've got something else you can't use. With a gift card, you can buy whatever you want so you can get something you could actually use. What's not to like? Well, but gift cards do have some drawbacks. So to discuss them, I'm joined by a first time guest, Patty Sweeney, who is our credit counselor in our Cambridge office. Patty, welcome to the show. Are you ready to talk gift cards? Hi, I am, Doug. Thanks. Excellent, excellent. Well, now, the reason I wanted to have you on the show is because you and I have talked many times, and I know that gift cards are kind of one of your pet peeves. So I wanted to explore the good, the bad, and you do a lot of presentations for community groups and so on and so forth, and, and gift cards are often one of the areas that come up. And what you've told me in one of your many rants on the subject is that they can be wasteful. So you have given me a list of reasons why they can be wasteful. I want to start with that. I'm going to throw out the list. I want you to comment on it. So sure. the first one you told me is that after you use a gift card, there may be a small balance left, which makes sense. If it's a $25 gift card, it is highly unlikely I can find something to buy for exactly $25, including, ta uh, including tax. So there is a, there could be something left over on the gift card. So what's the problem with that? The problem with that is, is now that money goes to waste. So you are either, if you have a balance left, you're either going to have to take out some of your own money to purchase that item, or you're going to have a small balance left on that card. And if the small balance is $2.20, what are the chances of you going back to that store to find something for $2.20? So there's a the chance that something's left over. I guess there's the opposite, which is I wanted to buy or I ended up buying something for 50 bucks and I had a $25 gift card. So that kind of becomes a bit... Well, that's counterproductive too, I guess, because you're forcing the person or strongly encouraging the, the gift recipient to spend even more money. Correct. And isn't that kind of defeating the purpose of a gift then? You've, you've, you've made someone spend more than what you, what you ultimately wanted them to spend. So, okay, they can be wasteful both with small or large balances. Now, is it not also possible that you can just forget about the card? Absolutely. I've done it myself. I've gotten gift cards as birthday gift, as Christmas gifts. I put them away somewhere safe because I'm afraid they're either going to get thrown out or lost. And then as time goes by, I've both forgotten about a gift card as well as I found gift cards when I wasn't really looking for them. So I'd put them away in such a safe place that I almost couldn't find them again. Now you're speaking about retailers and we just had uh, Stephanie Hughes on the podcast talking about the retail apocalypse. Sometimes retailers go out of business. That's kind of a problem if you've got a gift card then, I guess, right? Absolutely. Look at um, Payless just went out of business, I'm sure. I loved getting um, gift cards for Payless, but now if someone had gotten one and they're out of business, again, that money's gone to waste. So there are some wasteful aspects to gift cards. Okay, so that I understand, um, but... I know other than just the money aspect of it, you've said to me, well, there's, there's some other issues with gift cards. And one of them is you think they send a bad message. You don't like the message that a gift card is sending. So what is the message you don't like that's being sent when, uh, when someone gives a gift card? Well, sometimes gift cards I find can just be very impersonal. So instead of doing a little bit of homework and finding out what that person wants or needs, you just think, okay, you know what? I'm running out of time. Let's just get a gift card. And so it, it does. It comes across sometimes as being very impersonal if you don't do your research and find out, is there a specific item that that person wants or needs? Yeah. And I guess if I want that item that is at the sports store and you get me a gift card from the sports store, okay, well then that's pretty good. But if it's just a generic here, go shopping at the mall, then uh, not quite as, as well thought out, obviously. Tell me about 
how a gift card can turn you into a spender instead of a shopper. What What's the whole concept there? Your well, explain that to me. What, what what does that mean? So you get a gift card. Now you know it has to be spent. So it's just like free reign on anything you want. Whereas if you had cash, then you might consider, okay, you know what? I'm going to save a little bit of this cash. I'm going to spend a little bit. You're a credit counselor. You're in our Cambridge office. So you spend a lot of time actually meeting with people, teaching them about money. What lessons can be taught with respect to credit cards? And I'm thinking in particular, even with, you know, young people, teenagers, that sort of thing. What, how can gift cards be a teaching moment? What can you learn about uh, money from gift cards? So for gift cards, what you can do, if, if you, if you give a gift card and you give somebody a $15 gift card, what if you found that gift or a 15 sorry, a $40 gift on sale for $15. Now you've given them a $40 gift, but you've still stayed within your budget of that $15. And it kind of promotes consumerism because nobody really takes the time to stop and think, okay, what do I need? They just take that gift card and they go crazy and they spend it all. So you're kind of hitting on the area then of gift cards versus cash. Because if I'm giving someone a gift, well, I guess I've got three choices, right? I can give them an actual gift. Here you go. Here's a, here's a coffee mug. This would be a great gift actually, because it's got our, <laughs> our logo on it and everything. Um, I can give them cash or I can give them a gift card. So let's just compare then the cash versus the gift card. So you've already hit on the idea of savings. So with a gift card, well, you got to spend it. There, that's it, right? I don't know if it's possible to go to the store and cash in the gift card for cash. I don't know if that's a, a thing or not, but obviously cash is cash. So you've given us the example of there's an item for, um, well, if you give the person cash, they can you know shop at the Boxing Day sale, that sort of thing. Right. The You also could save a portion of it though too. Is that one of the bigger benefits of cash as opposed to a gift card then? Yes, absolutely. If you have cash, you can um, teach your child or your teenage kid what is good. You can spend half of it. Let's save half of it because there might be something down the road that you want again. And then you can put that other half of that money towards that. Yeah. And your example of... If I have the cash, well, maybe I'll wait till the Boxing Day sale. Maybe I'll go to a couple of different stores. I don't have to go to, to just one store. And maybe I can find that $40 thing on sale for 20 bucks, and I can actually put the other 20 bucks away as a saving so I can get the, the best of both worlds. That's so, right. Or you might want to add something to that gift depending on what it is. There might be another part to that gift, wherein, whereas you can save for that down the road and then purchase the other part that you're waiting for. So it becomes a, a more of a win-win. Now, with a gift card, so if I have a gift card from, you know, ABC store, well, I have to buy something at that store. And if I have a $25 gift card, well, then I guess I'm going to spend $25 at that store. What I'm not thinking about what I need. I'm thinking about how do I use up the, the credit card. That's not a great message then really, is it? No, no, it's not at all. Whereas if, like I said, like you said, if you have cash, you can use it at the store that you choose to go to. But if someone gives you a gift card and doesn't put any thought into it, then you're just, like you said, you're just going to go find something to buy for that amount of money. So, okay, I, I get the, the difference between the two then. Um, cash is probably the most impersonal gift, at least with a gift card. Well, I know you like sports, so I got you a gift card at the sports store, something like that, so I can see the difference. Um, cash, though, allows someone to save a portion of it. You know, maybe I'll wait. To, I don't have to use it now because the gift card is going to expire, that sort of thing. So there's kind of pros and cons between the, the two. Um, obviously gift cards are convenient though, too. They're, you know, here you go. I go to the store, boom, it's, it's, it's done. So there are people watching now who go, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. There's a difference between cash, but I, I really want to give gift cards. I'm not going to be giving $20 bills out to people. I'm going to, you know, give everyone a gift card to their, their favorite store. So if someone is bound and determined to give a gift card, give us some advice then on how to go about doing that. 
What's what's the key thing then if I'm giving a gift card from your point of view? So from my point of view, if you're giving a gift card, like I said, do a little bit of research. Find out is there a specific item that person wants? Is there a specific store that that item is in? Um, and if you're giving a gift card, think about what that person needs. If you're giving them a gift card for everyday essentials like gas, I don't everybody needs gas. If you're giving a gift card to a grocery store, all the grocery stores have almost anything you can possibly think of now. And for somebody that's on a really tight budget, it's very much appreciative, even for a drugstore. There's lots that you can buy in a drugstore. And that's going to be, that's going to make someone very happy because they shop there anyway. They have to spend that money there anyway. So you're just helping them out with their everyday essentials. Yeah, I don't know anybody who doesn't eat food. Exactly. And not very, there's not too many people that don't need gas. Yep. Yeah. If you have a car, I mean, obviously if you're giving it to someone who doesn't have a car, then I guess that would be, would be less appropriate. But, (laughs) but I I get your key point and that is put some thought into it. And I guess that's the same advice you give to someone if they're giving a gift or anything else, put some thought into it. So don't just automatically go get everyone a a gift card for the coffee shop because, well, if I don't drink coffee, then that's uh, sort of 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 less use. Whereas if, you know, me and my buddies go to the coffee shop every, every morning, well, then the coffee shop gift card is a, is a fantastic thing. So, so put some, put some thought into it, I think is, it makes perfect sense. And explain it to your kids as well. If you're giving, if you're giving them a gift card, explain to them why you're giving them that gift card and what, how they should handle that gift card. It's never a bad idea to teach your kids money management skills, age appropriate money management skills, because it's not a curriculum that's taught in school. Money management skills are skills that we need every single day when we pull out our wallet, when we open our mail. And um, if you don't have a parent that's going to teach you, and you don't have a teacher that's going to teach you, then you're pretty much set up for failure. I think the most um, I learned about money management when I was in grade school was how to write out a check. Mm -hmm. And then you go to high school, which is where kids typically get their first part-time job. So if they aren't taught anything, then they're set up for failure. And then you go to college or university if you're lucky enough, and the credit card companies are handing them out like candy. So if you don't get your kids involved in financial literacy or money management skills, like I said, they're set up for failure. And then when they're old enough to leave home and they get into financial problems, guess who they're coming to for help, Mm -hmm. right? So you're benefiting your children, but you're also benefiting yourself and you can relax to know, okay, I've taught my child A, B, and C. And it gives you that peace of mind knowing that they're not going out and just willy nilly. Whether they listen to you is a different story, but at least if you can teach them those money management skills, it's going to be a lot more beneficial for your child. Yeah, and that's an interesting point. You're using the gift card as a teaching moment as well as a gift. So, because there's some you know key money management lessons you you just went through there. I mean, if if I was teaching a teenager about money management, I'd talk about things like cell phones because that's something they use. Well, do you know what the contract says? Do you know what the cancellation provision? Do you know how the data works? All that kind of stuff. Well, a gift card is kind of the same thing, right? There are rules surrounding the gift card. Here's what happens if there's money left over. What happens if you lose it? Can you get the money back? Well, no, you've pretty much lost it and that's gone. So it can certainly be used as a, as a teaching moment as well. Absolutely. So I think that's, a, that's an excellent point. Now, the holiday season doesn't just have to be about give a lot of gifts, give a lot of gifts, give a lot of gifts. It doesn't just have to be money, money, money. So give us some insight into how we can enjoy the holiday season without blowing all our money. What particular traditions do you have in in your family that are fun and aren't massively expensive? Well, we do something that's a ton of fun, but Um, there's other, I, and I'll get into that, but there's other things that people have to think about. There's lots of things that you can do where you don't have to spend money. It's about spending time together. So if you decorated the tree together, if you went caroling, you could just spend the entire day in your pajamas 
and just chill out and play board games all day, right? None of that's costing you any money, but you're spending time with your loved ones. So what we do in my family is back in the day, we used to buy for everybody and that got completely out of control. And then we started um, picking names, which was fine. And a lot of families do that, but in our family, it just kind of got boring after a while. So what we do now, I do it both with my family as well as a group of 10 of my girlfriends, is you everybody buys a gift. You can put your own price limit on it. We do $30. So you buy a $30 gift that's suitable for a man or a woman. The night you're going to play the game, the gifts come, they all get put in the middle of the floor. And now you start rolling a dice. When you roll doubles, you go to the middle and you pick a gift. Nobody opens their gift until everybody has one. So these gifts are all uh, wrapped up. You can't tell what they are. You don't know what the heck is in that pile. So when, then you start rolling a dice. And if you roll doubles, you go to the center and you pick out a gift. And then once everybody's done that and they have a gift, now everybody opens them. So once everybody's gift is opened and everyone can see what the other person has, then the real fun starts because then we set a timer and then we start rolling the dice again. So if you roll doubles and you have a gift, Doug, that I love, I'm going to come and trade it with you. I'm not going to steal it on you because we want everybody to leave with a gift. So this goes on until the timer goes, but the fun part about it is there's always going to be those two or three things that everybody wants, and a lot of times it's unexpected. And then so you're stealing back and forth constantly, and it's just a blast. And when my 10 girlfriends and I do it, you could probably hear us in Cambridge because it gets very loud, but it's a ton of fun. Nobody goes broke Everybody leaves with a gift. And again, everybody's just having a blast. So the cost is 30 bucks. You're not buying a gift for everybody. You're buying one $30 gift. Right. Everyone's buying the same. So, and like you said, you could make it $10 if you want. Yep. I mean, it's gotta be yep. something you bought at the dollar store or whatever. Yep. You can set whatever limits on it you want. So, so I got a couple of questions about that. Number one, um, is there any uh, drinks involved in all this, or what? Um, there uh, could what? be a few cocktails, cocktails. involved, okay. which I, I, makes it a I little bit more fun. I was just wondering about how it was getting <laughs> getting so raucous. My second question for you is: so, uh, at any of these uh, gift uh, things, has anyone given my book as a as a gift? I like to get a commercial in for it. Every, I actually every started show. a book club, and your oh, your, there, your, there your you book go. was the first Fantastic. one I suggested. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. I don't know if that's a true story or not, but but I like the story anyways. So, you've talked about you know, family and all that that kind of stuff and things you can do at, at Christmas. Are there any lessons you learned growing up? I mean, you, you've you explained a little bit about some of what your family traditions are. Um, you know, how did you get introduced to things like credit, your first credit card, all that sort of thing? So there's actually an interesting story and it relates back to kind of what I was saying about how you can teach your kids age appropriate money management skills. So when I got my first job, and I got my first credit card. I remember my father would constantly say to me, you're not carrying a balance on that credit card, I are like you? the guy already, yes. <laughs> and sometimes I would refrain from answering, but he would say to me, if you're carrying a balance on that credit card, you're a kid, you're making minimum wage, right? Take the interest on that credit card and divide it by your hourly wage. So I remember doing that one time and thinking, holy smokes, I just worked three hours for nothing. And for whatever reason, I was probably 17 at the time, that always, always stuck in the back of my head. So those little things that sometimes you don't even realize you're teaching your kid a lesson, but those lessons are going to stick with you as you get into adulthood. And it's going to help you in the long run, because like I said, If nobody teaches you those things, you're set up for failure. And a lot of times now when you're applying for a job, when you're leaving college or university, um, employers do credit checks on you. So sometimes students are leaving school already set up for failure because they haven't handled things properly while they've been in school. So any lesson you can teach your child about stuff like that is is a very good lesson. And that, that's an excellent teaching moment from your father, obviously. Take the interest and divide it by your hourly wage. So if I'm getting paid 15 bucks an hour, 
which you probably weren't when you were 17, but let's just keep the math simple here. And I paid $45 in interest this month on my credit card. I worked three hours just to pay interest. In other words, I worked three hours for nothing. That's right. And why give the rich banks all of our hard-earned Ooh, money? You're not a big fan of the banks there, Patty? Not well, a big uh, fan. I, I think they are rich. We are not. There you go. They they do okay. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on this show is to explain that there are ways that you can still have fun, have a good time without breaking the bank, as it were. Absolutely. Because how fun is it to enjoy the holidays and know all you have to look forward to in January is this huge bill coming in. That wouldn't sit well with me. I probably wouldn't enjoy the holidays. If you can do it without using credit cards and you can use cash and not pay anybody interest. Everybody knows that Christmas comes every December. So if you plan ahead of time and you look at your budget and you think, okay, how much according to my income do I think that I could comfortably spend per year on gifts? So whatever you personally celebrate. So for instance, I say, okay, I can spend 600 bucks a year on gifts. That means that I need to put 50 bucks away into this little account over here. And then how fun would it be in October or November to say, you know what? I'm going shopping. I can do it guilt-free because I'm a good budgeter and I plan for this and I don't have to put a darn thing on a credit card. Yeah, it's an excellent point. And obviously, you know, people are watching this in December, so it's a little late to be saving for the holiday season now, but you're, you've got a full year to start saving for next year. And, and yours is an excellent example. So I go through and I figure out in the month of December or, you know, all through the year, I've got mm -hmm. birthdays and other holidays and whatnot. How much am I going to spend? And I'm going to decide right now. I'm going to decide that the limit is, in your example, 600 bucks, and that's got to cover gifts and the Christmas turkey and the gas to go to grandma's house and all the rest of it. So, okay, that's 50 bucks a month I have to put away. If I get paid every two weeks, then that's roughly 25 bucks a paycheck that I need to put away. And it's not that hard to set up a separate savings account. You and I have talked about this many times at one of the online banks where there are no service charges, for example, you set up that savings account, you program it in that every payday, 25 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever exactly. the number is, gets shot right into that savings account. I don't miss it. And then when my kid's birthday comes up or when Christmas comes up or anything else, okay, I've got the money sitting there. And you can take advantage of a lot of sales if you've already got the money sitting in your bank account. So when that thing I want to buy for my kid goes on sale on October the 25th, no problem. Cash is already sitting there. Don't have to worry about it. Um, so I've got a lot more flexibility as well. But it takes some pre-planning, obviously, to do it. And it does. And I tell people, I'm honest with them and say a month one and month two might seem a little tight just because you're used to having that money in your hands. But I guarantee you after that month three, four, five, and six, trust me, you are never going to miss that money. The bonus is if something did happen and you needed to get your hands on that money, it's not like it's an investment. You can go get that money. But once you do it month after month and you don't have to physically do it yourself and it just automatically gets done, six months down the road, you look at those accounts and you think, wow, I've got some money in there and it hasn't even seemed like a real challenge. And then, like I said, it's a lot more fun to go shopping knowing that you're covered as far as cash and you're not going to get a big bill later on down the road. Yeah. And $25 a paycheck is a lot easier than 600 bucks all at one. Exactly. And exactly. I realize 25 bucks a paycheck over the year is also roughly 600 bucks. So it's the, the dollars are the same, but you're right. It's the 25 bucks is a lot easier to manage on a, on a regular basis. And of course, we're talking about the holiday season, but anything you spend money on that you don't spend money on every month. Absolutely. You can use exactly the same system for it. So, you know, I have to get the license sticker on my car renewed every year on my birthday. Well, guess what? My birthday is the same day every year. 
Exactly. Unless you're exactly. born on February 29th, I guess. But <laughs> and and your point about Christmas. Yep, I can tell everyone in the year 2017, uh, 2020, 2300, it'll be December 25th. It's the same. Exactly. It's the same day all the time. So you can plan for those things. Now I understand you can't plan for when the the car is going to break down or or things like that. But there are there is a lot of seasonality to our lives. The kids always go back to school in September. So when are you buying all their new school stuff? In August and September. You know, the winter starts in, well, in this year it started really early. <laughs> it started in, in early November. But, you know, you know roughly when you're going to have to buy all those sorts of things. So, and there's no reason you can't have separate savings accounts for the holidays, for vacations, things like that. I think that gets to be a little silly if you've got 50 different savings accounts. Yeah, but. that's too much. But you actually hit a really good point. I have four savings accounts. Doesn't mean there's a ton in them, but that's the way my mind works. I know my account ending in 2-6 is my house slash car emergency fund. What's the password for that account? Uh, it uh, is XXXXX. <laughs> um, so, so what do you have in these four accounts then? What are the four accounts for? Okay, so I have a account for house slash car emergency. I have a just a miscellaneous account or some people might call it an emergency account. I have a vacation account and I'm uh, about eight years ago, I went away and I thought, you know what? I deserve to take a vacation every year. So how am I going to do this? I opened up an account and every paycheck, 75 bucks goes into it. Yeah. Like I said, it was tight at the beginning. That money's been taken out of my account now for every month for seven years. I do not miss that money. So the good thing is I can't say it's always been spent on a vacation, but that money's gotten me out of trouble. If I needed it for something, I just have to suck it up and say, okay, there's no vacation this year. But it's all you're really doing is going from old habits to new habits. And once you do your new habits for five, six, seven, eight months, all of a sudden it seems like the norm to you. And you look at these little accounts accumulating and that's what gives you the encouragement to keep going because now it's the opposite. Now you look and you think, man, I, I did good. I'm a good saver. Now you almost don't want to touch that money, right? Because you work so hard on putting it in there. But it also gives you that peace of mind. So same thing with your car. Everybody knows something's going to happen to your car. It's not if, it's when. So you know what, what according to my income, what could I personally afford to put away into this account every month so that I'm my butt's covered if something happens? You figure that out according to your budget, same thing. You set it up at the bank. You don't have to think about it manually. You don't have to do it manually. Nothing happens to your car. Six months down the road, oh man, my brakes went. Oh, I've got this little slush fund over here that's going to pay for that because I'm a good budgeter and I put that money away every month. Yeah. Saving money, it builds up. Borrowing money, it goes the other way. You're incurring interest. So you want to be building it up, not uh, not going the other way. So exactly. I, I think that's, that's fantastic advice. And again, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is you are one of the credit counselors. Well, you are the credit counselor that people meet with in our Cambridge office. And we've got, you know, lots of other credit counselors in, in our other offices. Diane has been on the show before and uh, lots of people like her. This is the kind of stuff you talk to our clients about, actual practical stuff. Here's ways to actually save money. Here's how to do it. You know, have a separate bank account. And we get into all sorts of stuff depending on what's appropriate for the, the particular person. Some people I'll tell them set up a TFSA because that way the money is more tucked away if it's for something for a longer term. Maybe you need to be putting money into an RSP. Maybe it's a savings account because you know you're going to be spending it in the next few months. But these are the kind of things that we go through with people that you go through with people when you're you're meeting them every single day. So I think that gave everyone a bit of an insight into, into oh, how all that works as good. well. So, so Patty, thanks very much for being on the show. Oh, I really it was a appreciate pleasure. it. I really appreciate it. So that's, I think, lots of very good practical advice. I mean, we talked about gift cards and then got into some some other money management stuff, but I think gift cards are very convenient as we, we agree. They can be efficient, but they can also be inefficient because there can end up being money left on the card at the end, or you're making the recipient spend extra money, or maybe the card expires or the store goes out of business. There can be downsides to them as well. So your advice is give it some thought. What does the recipient actually need? 
is a gift card a good idea because maybe I can teach them some money management stuff or is it, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be inducing them to spend more money because I'm giving them a $25 gift card, but everything at that store costs 50 bucks. So it's actually going to cost them more money. So I think if you can think it through, you can come up with what's appropriate. And then you also gave us some great advice on how to enjoy the holidays without spending a whole lot of money. Uh, the drinking game sounded pretty fun to me as well. So <laughs> You're calling it a drinking game. That's what game. <laughs> I'm calling it. Patty, thanks very much. That's our show for today. Thanks for listening. Until next week, I'm Doug Hoyes. That was Debt Free in 30. <laughs>